Hey everybody, we're here today with another one of Anson's amazing local artists, Mary Culpepper. Hello everyone. So I've, uh, I've, I've uh, worked with Mary in the past. She's an amazing singer and she uh, actually played with the guy we did on our last interview, Robert Grind. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today, Mary, is how you got started and uh, you know how long you've lived here in town and uh, there's uh, w some places you like to play and stuff like that. So if you would just take the ball and run with that, make my job a lot easier. Okay, um, so um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. So I ended up here. You um, lost a bet, obviously. <laughs> 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 I wish, but um, my father joined the military. I guess how we all ended up here. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up here. Um, and I was like um, the seventh grade. So I've been here quite a few years. And um, I went to Anniston High School. I joined the choir. Um, I was really quiet growing up. Like people don't realize, though, people don't think that I'm quiet or that I was quiet because I sing. I could sing in front of hundreds of people, but I was really a quiet person. And so I joined the choir and um, it, I took off from there. Um, in 92, I joined a, a local band here in Anniston, um, and that helped me kind of get over my shyness a little bit more. And from there, me and my best friend, we um, created a duo group called, called Marlez, and that was part of my name, Mary, and part of her name, Leslie. So from there, we started uh, doing a lot of background singing for um, uh, some blues, blues artists. Um, we did a lot of, um, you know, just things for people that may have needed some, uh, somebody to come in and do some background. Um, we traveled with um, Jesse James. He's, he, he was an upcoming uh, blues artist. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just traveled with different bands over the, over the, the course of 30 years. Um, oh wow! I didn't know you traveled that much. Yeah, I, I did. I, I was with some band, a band, a couple of bands in Atlanta, um, a band in Birmingham, um, and then I've been with Daybreak Band, which is uh, established out of Gadsden, Alabama. I've been with them since it's been over ten to fifteen years. So, um, and you know, Daybreak, we we do cover tunes, and you know, we do a lot of corporate stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I also do a lot of things by myself. Um, Robert and I uh, came together. We actually met in 1992 when I joined that band. Mm -hmm. Robert became a part of it and that's how we knew each other. And so, you know, years went by, he moved around, I moved around. And um, here we are, we got back together. Um, I think within the last maybe two to three years and formed Melanin Magic. So um, with Melanin Magic, you know, we are doing anything from weddings to uh, funerals to bridal showers, whatever they ask us to do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of a little bit about me. I will tell you a fun fact about me, though. I'd love a fun fact, man. Okay. Well, um, my paternal grandmother was a Ray Lett. She was the no background way. singer for Ray Charles. Fantastic. Yes. That is so awesome. I think that's where my vocal talent came from. Sure. So yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure you got some natural born talent. Now for people that are watching today, where can they uh, find you on social media or would you like to just give your phone number out to everybody who's watching today? Yes. So, <laughs> yes, I'll and give I you do my have, phone number. I have a business card, but yes, uh, my number is uh, 256 Five two five six zero two one, and on social media, my name is Mary Culpepper. So you can always uh, hit me up on uh, Facebook. I normally do Facebook more than I would do like Instagram or anything like that. Um, haven't branched out too much on Instagram and TikTok, but yeah, that's my information. So I've learned from watching my son's career that Facebook is a pretty valuable tool for musicians. Oh, yeah. You can get booked there. You can post videos, et cetera, et cetera. And oh, yeah. I, I, think, I don't think I really knew that when he first oh, yeah. started trying to book stuff. So that's a, a pretty I nice thing it. for people to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. So. 
Again, thank you for coming, Mary. Uh, I, I so appreciate you coming and helping us here and getting this this thing off the ground. Uh, I understand that you're going to sing some songs for us. Would you like to I tell am, us about that? I am. I'm going to sing two songs. Um, one of them um, is by Aretha Franklin called Rock Steady. Rock Steady. So the other one is a song called Free. And I, I have a few of... Um, the people that like to come and support me that loves that song. So who's the original artist that sings do, it? Um, Perry. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's not Perry. really important. <laughs> Perry. Well, just, you know, you know, Perry, we love Perry. <laughs> He's great. He's fantastic. You guys, you guys go Google, she. go Google Perry. This is she, but it's called, it's or called her. free. Um, her name, I can't remember her last name. The only Perry I know is Phil Perry. No, not Phil Perry. I like because, Phil Perry Because though. he's I love, not female. I love Phil Perry. There's that. Now that's one of my dad's favorites. Is it really? Yes. I like Phil, Phil Perry. Perry as well. Yes, yes. Yes. All right, then. I think that's all I've got for you. Um, we're going to be back in just a second. You guys stay tuned. Mary's going to come back and uh, knock the roof off his place. Okay. We'll be back in a minute.
Hey everybody, we're backstage with Snack Time, getting ready to play with Portugal the Man here in Birmingham. I'm gonna pass the mic around, let everybody introduce themselves and go from there. Hey y'all, oh this is heavier than I thought it was gonna be. My name is Michael Spearman, I play trombone and compose and other things and I'm playing keys now too. So yeah, I'm having a good time here, just hanging out with these guys. This is way lighter than I thought it was gonna be. Okay. My name, <laughs> my name is Sam Gellerstein. I play tuba and uh, with snack time, yeah. My name is Ben Stalker. I play the saxophone in snack time. And emails. <laughs> and he's in charge of emails, too. Uh, first of all, the reason I'm here, uh, we're here in Birmingham, Alabama. Have you guys played in Alabama before? Never been to Alabama. Never been to Alabama. Been to Alabama. Really? Yes. Going my first time to New Orleans, we stopped whatever that stop was in between New Orleans and Florida, and we used the bathroom at the gas station. That was my only time in Alabama. A lot of people say that about our hometown. They're like, yeah, I peed on that exit. <laughs> so it's a famous exit. Yes, yeah, so there's that. Um, what are your impressions of Alabama so far? So far, I mean, we've been here for, what, all of like three, four hours? Yeah. And we've mostly been at the venue, but I like... Well, we stopped at what? We stopped at Tasty like a town. Tasty Town. Man, that good. good. Tons of good food here, man. Yeah. Full of big blue, beautiful skies, lots of open air. It doesn't look like there's too many uh, like uh, new development buildings, uh, you know, choking out the skyline. So it's it looks very beautiful. It looks like it's been a city that's kept true to its original design, it looks like. It, it is trying to, to do better. We just got like the... World Games, I think, a yeah, couple I years ago, that. was pretty neat. And there's a thriving uh, arts and entertainment culture down here. Cool. And, uh, you know, we get a lot of really, really good bands and good shows here. Looks like For it. a town our size. What's the story with the innovation? The innovation, uh, we've had to sign like, these cool, like, old, like, 50s, 60s letters. They were kind of gothic. Uh, but it was, uh, it said innovation something. I don't know. Maybe you don't know that. My guess would be uh, the new mayor, his name is Randall Woodfin. He's pretty forward-thinking, progressive guy. That's probably something that he's pushing. And he's he's like a big picture guy. He's kind of a breath of fresh air for this area. So I, I, I really like it. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what do we know about the new album that I heard was coming out this summer? Can we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we went into the studio with Will Yip back last April. Will Yip's a legendary Grammy award-winning producer, um, mainly known for his work with like in the emo, pop, punk, and hardcore scenes. But um, he also is quite a hit maker himself. So we wanted to work with someone who's a little bit outside of what we sound like to kind of see what would happen. The music's turned out really good. Um, we have a bunch of songs coming out. Two already have been debuted on Spotify, iTunes. I'm sorry. Apple Music and all that. I don't give a damn and together. Yeah. Okay, and can you tell me what your contribution was to the single? Um, I just washed clothes <laughs> for the band. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, he's in line right now. Oh, but um, yeah, no, I, I just, I, I composed, um, composed a couple of the songs. One of the songs is actually from the first album I, I did. And then, um, I composed uh, together with the help of, of some important people from the major contributions from Sam and you say, and Ben, you were there. Indeed, there we go. And um, yeah, just help it with recording when things are going wrong or when things are going right. Me just going, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of group decisions. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike is, the, Mike is the ultimate voice of reason in the band. Mike is like, I'm like on one end far, far, far this way, and then a couple people are on this way, and Mike's like the one who will tell both sides to like shut up. It's really great. Or like stop, that's enough. Let's go back to uh, Will Yip. Yeah. And let's talk about the record, uh, if you've got like a close to release date, and um, just a little bit about the record. No, no absolute release date at this point, but... The music is an amalgamation of everyone in the band's taste, you know, from references, you know, we've got Parliament and Prince, but also like hardcore sounds, post-punk sounds, there's, so, you know, Al Green soul on there, there's hip-hop, Tribe Call Quest vibes in there, so it's kind of all over the place, but it's, it's all representative of, I think, everyone's musical taste, but in a package that we like to call, um, you know, this is dance music, and the idea of dance music being less of like a but more of like a the, the idea of gathering your community to dance 
and to drop what you're to drop any of the uh, bad feelings you have for 45 minutes and just to forget about that and come together. Yeah. When we spoke earlier on the Zoom call, you were talking about collaborations with food and the band. Can you tell me a little more about that? Because I think that's a really novel approach I've never heard of before. Yeah. Here, Yeah. Uh, snack time collaborating with food is is been something since day one. Actually, before the band started, Sam started something called Snack Time that was more of an all-encompassing event that featured food and music, and that got canceled by COVID. But that's kind of what led to continuing on that name. But basically, in the beginning, we would throw these events um, because venues were closed. We had to play outdoors. We would throw these events where we'd feature a chef in a park and you'd say, come pay us for a ticket, and you get to watch the show, and you get a meal, and it comes with a drink and a dessert and all these, th these things. And we would feature all these different chefs in Philly, and they were so awesome to want to collaborate with us. But now we, we kind of do, we do other things now. We're not doing so much of our own events, but we are, you know, we'll go out to a restaurant, and we will eat, all of us, and kind of just, uh, film our experience and talk about that with the world and we're working with some food brands like GoPuff um, and uh, recently uh, Taco Bell Feed the Beat so food is like an integral part of, of our organization I like it. I like yeah it. I'm gonna go ahead and try and wrap it up because I don't want Sarah to come down here and and uh, smite me but um, I'm gonna go around the room I gotta ask this this man right here has told me about uh, Alan Iverson practice Practice. <laughs> Favorite sixer all time. Favorite sixer all time? Oh man. Probably 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 Dr. J. I got it. I like that. I love Dr. J. How about you, sir? Paul Reed, B ball Paul. I love him. I love B ball Paul. He dunks, he gets boards, he gets blocks. He fills in for the for the big guy Joel Embiid. He fills this role, he does a great job. Paul Reed. You know, I'm going to go with the future, not the past. I'm going to say Tyrese Maxey. Oh, there you go. Anything else any of you gentlemen would like to add before I go ahead and get cut off here by our, our uh, young cameraman here? We are coming your way. We're coming to your city. You can't stop it. You can only hope to contain it. We love you very much. We're Snack Time from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.